Now we reach the point when we can talk about inversion, right? We talked a lot about uh, sentences without inversion, but imagine that you want to start your main sentence with something which is not uh, the subject. We are not robots. We sometimes uh, start with something else than a doing person or a doing uh, thing. And this something else is called an inversion trigger in the main clause. We cannot start a subordinate clause with something which is not a subject uh, formally, but um, we, if it's not a conjunction, of course, but if we deal with the main clause, then we can start with something else. And um, so the inversion is normally only possible in the main clause. And there are only a few cases when it happens at the subordinate clause, but it requires a longer sentence, a very long with interdependency um, uh, inside of it between the two clauses and the one main clause. But this is a, another story sort of. What you should remember is that uh, for inversion to happen, there should be uh, fulfilled two conditions. It should be the main clause and there should be an inversion trigger is something else before the main clause. This something else or inversion trigger can be an object or an object phrase uh, or a subordinate clause, a longer uh, dependent part or a free adverb or an adverbal phrase. That's enough for you to know to uh, make sentences correctly. Central adverbs do not normally work as inversion triggers. That's why you never make inversion because you have also first or you don't actually start sentence with also and then the verb. It's, it's uncommon. Uh, central adverbs may stay at the beginning of the sentence of the main clause, but they are a part of an adverbal phrase. If you say, Ike kun den her uh, bow har læst. Ike kun den her bow. It's a long object phrase where Ike is a part of an object. So you do inversion because you have a long object. Ike kun den her bo har jeg læst. You say har jeg læst. Or os denne gang vil vi fokusere på de vigtigste punkter. So you make inversion uh, of the verb before a subject uh, because you have os inside of a time adverb denne gang. Right? But not because of uh, os. So inversion means you place the first verb before subject when you have an inversion trigger before, before this first verb. So the scenario here is inversion trigger, the first verb, the subject, then comes an optional field. And then if you have the second verb, then you have the it and another object. So it can be here object, can be first, right, the inversion trigger, and then can be another object later. So the formula, main, like shortly speaking, the formula is inversion trigger, verb, subject, optional field, which is often an adverb. Let's uh, take an example here. For a full in permanent opposite in Denmark, it's a long inversion trigger, adverbal of condition purpose in order to get a residence, permanent residence permit. Then I make inversion of the first verb before the subject. Sket men, right? This is what you probably learned so far as well. But then what do I do next with another adverb? For example, first, it's a free adverb, not a central one. It comes after the subject. So it's like subject, sorry, verb, subject, adverb. Maybe you heard about SVA uh, structure. And then I have another verb and then everything else. Another free adverb and another free adverb which are final in the final position. So I read again the whole sentence. 
for at få en permanent opholdstilladelse i Danmark, skal man først bo i landet i nogle år. If you uh, ask uh, whether we can put first, because it's a free adverb, whether we can for, put it first at the very beginning, then I can say um, um, yes, but it would be too long, too heavy. Like first, for foreign permanent opposite in Denmark, scamming. So it's not wrong, but it's a bit heavy, but it's okay. But it's better to divide. Uh, adverbs like one is free, another one in the middle. Um, so free adverbs uh, work as uh, inversion triggers. Here is an adverbal phrase, right? It's not uh, it's not one free adverb. <clears throat> Examples of free adverbs can be moské, selvfølgelig, for example, therefore, til gengæld. Bagefter, på den måde, på den ene side, på den anden side, derimod, dog, tværtimod. If you're in doubt whether you deal with a uh, free adverb, a central adverb, or whether it's an adverb at all, you can look it up in the dictionary. Um, it would be written adverbium, eller A-D-V. Um, so let's take some uh, more examples. Um, so only scenario one, only inverted uh, main clause. Selvfølgelig har Jens også mange gode venner i København. In scenario one you would say, Jens har selvfølgelig også uh, mange gode venner. Eh? But if it's important for you to start with selvfølgelig, it's fine. Selvfølgelig har Jens også Uh, man good enough. So fully is a free verb, uh, sorry, free adverb, an inversion trigger. Then I choose scenario two, verb, and then subject, right? So fully high yens also. Also is this optional field. It comes after a subject in scenario one. Um, in the next example, we have again. Um, a free adverb, and then verb, subject, but then we have an object as an optional field, not another adverb. Folkeskole tilbyder gratis undervisning. Til gengæld har private skole færre elever i klassen. So it's an advantage, right? In fordel, men, uh, but there are, also, there are also advantages of uh, private schools. Til gengæld, um, Like on the contrary and compensating uh, for the first point, uh, to gengel is a free adverb. Then I say ha verb, private school, subject, group, and then fair elivo i class, fair elivo, its object, like what they have. They have an object, right? They have a few students. If you Remember scenario one, then you could also write it like saying, uh, private school har til gengæld fag elever. That would be S, V, and then uh, optional field. But it, it's very normal when you argument, you start with these three adverbs because it's emphatically and um, logically connecting your sentences with the previous uh, utterance. In the next example, we have three adverbs. For den ene side, for den anden side. They're also three adverbs which trigger inversion. For den ene side, er det en fordel, at man selv kan bestemme over sine arbejdstider. På den anden side, er det risiko for, at grænsen mellem arbejde og privatliv flyder sammen. Imagine you talk about flexible working hours, for example. So, you have er det en fordel, not det er, but er det, because you have på den ene side, then you have a subclause, just uh, ignore it so far, and then på den anden side, er der risiko, there is a risk, not der er risiko, but er der risiko. 
in the next example, you have again a free adverb, demel, like and with that and consequently, demel kommer der flere udfordringer i forhold til ansættelsesaftaler. Here you have a free adverb first, then an adverb, uh, sorry, verb is coming. Kommer uh, da is a formal subject. If you remember in the first uh, lessons, I mentioned that da is a very common uh, subject. Um, do er jeg ikke enig i, at forbud mod bil i centrum kan løse trafikproblemer i store byer? Um, if you, for example, have to comment on a proposal to make um, a city center free of cars, to make a ban on driving inside the city center, then you say, however, I don't agree that on the point that uh, prohibiting um, cars in the centrum can uh, solve traffic problems. So do is a free adverb, however, AII. If you want to make a good exercise out of this lesson material, you can try rephrasing these five sentences above so that the free adverbs inversion triggers, they are free, they stand as central adverbs. Because all the sentences we have uh, discussed now, they are made according to scenario two, the inversion trigger, but since the inversion trigger is a free adverb, you can put it in the middle, in the place uh, of uh, optional field according to scenario one, subject, verb, and optional field. For example, da kommer uh, dermed flere udfordringer. Right, if I repeat, da kommer dermed flere udfordringer. And then the rest is the same uh, if a hotel and citizens hotel. So I hope now that you understand why these adverbs are called free adverbs, why we make inversion after them, and uh, uh, the option. Uh, I hope you understand that they can be used according to scenario one as an optional field coming in the middle, right? As a central. So in the <clears throat> next lesson, we'll learn about uh, different uh, inversion triggers. Um, but here it was an introduction of inversion, only the main clause. And um, you need to have an inversion trigger for, for this to happen. And inversion itself means that you put a verb before a subject, only the first verb.